that for people to help us. So awesome. Thank you. It's good to yeah. hear. I, I want to give people what, you know, we really need and, and what we can really do. You know what I'm right. saying? What we can, what we need and can do. Get my incense going. Okay. I was going to ask what the smoke was. I'm in a whole different industry. So I had to ask. <laughs> Could have been anything. That's a legitimate <laughs> question. The the smoke is my incense. Okay. I always burn incense. I always burn a white candle. Some sage or just incense in general? I burn sage when I want to clear the space, clear the energy, and invite new energy into the space. But you know what? My energy is good. I don't always say it because I keep awesome. a lot of good energy around me. So that's I right. see people are coming in. Yep, that's right. That's right. People are coming in. Welcome in. Thank you. Thank you. We have a really great edition of Tuesday Talk coming up. As always, I have invited someone who lives this lifestyle and who is an expert in what it is that they do. Some of you may recognize him. Oh, there's my mom. <laughs> um, some of you may recognize him because he's been here before. And... Um, and he's uh, really good at explaining things. Robert and I went to college together. And um, so it, it's always great to reconnect with, with old friends. So when you come on in, let me know where you are. Let me know where you are so I can give you a little bit of a shout out. And I always am so grateful and thankful that people join me on Tuesday Talk and chime in to see what we are gonna be discussing this evening. Come on in, come on in. I see some regulars on here. I see Jason Edwards, Atep Peru Nabu, Joanna Jahi Adisi Ankima'a from Columbus, Georgia, in our old stomping grounds, Georgia. Georgia. Georgia on my mind. I was just thinking that, Georgia. Is Georgia ever on your mind? Often I go back and forth and I'm about to get some more property down there. So okay. yeah, it's great for farming. It is. It certainly is great for farming down there. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I see June Cleaver is in Connecticut. Glad to be here. My first time. Thank you so much, Ms. Cleaver. So I'm going to have a few more people come on in before we get started. Okay. Tonight's Tuesday talk is so pertinent and it's so right on time. I have Robert Gilchrist with us and he has started a company called Let's Grow Inside. What do you think that means? What do you think he does for a living if it's, it says let's grow inside? Well, he's growing cannabis inside. And besides that fact, especially considering that cannabis is a, a new, newest, industry that's very lucrative the importance of being able to number one grow your own food number two understand the process of it how to do it when to do it what your what your plants need what your vegetables need in terms of light humidity moisture soil nutrients water sunlight temperature all of those things reconnecting with your food is something that in my opinion, reconnects you to yourself. It just does. It really does. Um, I'm back in the gym hitting the weights. I did legs today. Today was leg day. <laughs> and I'd been thinking about getting one of those um, prepared food services, you know, where they just do all your um, food for the week and just send it to you. And I just said, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. I want to actually do it myself because I want to connect to my own food and prepare my own food and season my own food. And in the process of doing that, you're able to look at whatever it is you have, whether you have chicken or, or mushrooms. Where did this chicken or mushrooms come from? Who was taking care of the soil? Who was taking care of the animal or the vegetables that are growing? How do I clean it? How do I cut it? How do I cook it? How do I season it? Which type of oil should I use? I mean, these are the questions that at least I go through. And some of those questions other people go through as well as you prepare your food. Which temperature should I use? Am I baking, boiling? The connection to your food just really connects you to you because it's the nutrients that you need in order to live and to thrive, right? Okay, so that was my 
a reason to myself or for myself that I was going to make my own food and not do a prep, a prep service for my food. The other thing that I said to myself was this year, I'm going to learn how to grow all of the vegetables that I eat. Now I live in the Northeast, whether I'm in New York City or Connecticut, it's not the total ultimate um, climate in, in which to grow, but you absolutely can, okay? Robert can attest to that. We're gonna get into a little bit of that later. So I set a goal for myself to grow all the vegetables that I eat. All the vegetables that I eat, I'm gonna grow them and I'm not gonna buy them anymore. So not only am I saving money and time going into the grocery, grocery store, I'm gonna redirect that time to being outside, getting my vitamin D, getting my hands dirty in the, in the actual literal soil, planting a seed or planting, you know, uh, little plants, little plantlets that come from uh, growing from your seeds at first. Okay. So that's my goal. At the end of tonight, I want you guys to set a goal. How are you going to reconnect to your food? How are you going to reconnect to this very natural process, a very natural part of living, understanding your food? Okay. And without further ado, I'm bringing on, uh, have tonight, a friend who not only is growing, growing inside, growing, growing inside, growing cannabis, but he can cook, y'all. He can really cook. He throws down in the kitchen. He can cook. Part of the reason he can cook is because he's an alpha. And as y'all have heard me say, alphas think they know everything. <laughs> I had to throw Facts. it in there. Facts. See, Jabari's an alpha. He knows. Um, <laughs> but but the reality of it is, when you are that involved with your with your food and you grow, there's a certain type of reciprocity that happens with growing your own food and then eating it. And we know that reciprocity and balance is one uh, are, are two of the principles of of ma'at and, and and laws of ma'at. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking, and I'm gonna turn the mic over to Robert Gilchrist. Robert, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. And I mean, you pretty much gave my whole presentation. So thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> and, uh, but you 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 touched on some really valid points that I want to kind of like go back over, right? Sure. Absolutely. And I'll start by using myself as the example. So I am currently a a quasi carnivore, right? <laughs> So I'm doing more plant-based a lot now. I still have a craving for some chicken wings and I feel like I can eat what I want. But here's the thing, when we talk about eating what we want, right? So your body is your temple. Your body is your temple. And how we take care of it uh, is relative to what we put in it, right? You are what you eat, literally. So, uh, for starters, I want to make sure that you can, I'm not glitching out on you. Am I good? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. So when we talk about the plant, right, we talk about all the nutrients that we put in this plant. So I have a curriculum where I teach people how to grow in the privacy of their own home. I teach people how to grow cannabis. I've taught people how to grow vegetables. It's the same principle of we teach people how to grow cannabis with this course and with this equipment that we have behind us. Um, and we meet every Saturday and we walk you through it from planting the seed, propagating the seed all the way to harvest, right? It's the same principle that you would have for your vegetables, for a tomato plant, for beets, for knowing what. So when we talk about this plant, let's, let's get a first a few things as a fundamental basis for us, right? Plants take uptake nutrients into their roots, into their uh, their system through the ground. So the nutrients are in the soil. The plant has roots. It grows down. It it's, it transfers the nutrients from the soil into the plant, and that's how it grows. Different nutrients. So you hear uh, like MPK. We teach all about the basic nutrients: nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, right? Uh, calcium, magnesium. There's all kinds of nutrients and minerals that go into these plants to make them grow the way they grow optimally. The human body is no different, right? The human body needs nitrogen. 
It needs potassium. It needs phosphorus. It needs calcium. It needs magnesium. It needs iron. It needs all these nutrients and minerals. And you're not going to get them out of Kroger or Safeway or Winn Dixie or wherever. As a matter of fact, if it's on a commercial and it's being advertised, it's probably not good for you, right? You don't. When's the last time you've seen a commercial that has a head of broccoli and just eat it raw? (laughs) Right? It's not gonna. It's not gonna sell. So, but understanding the plant is valuable, right? Can I feed these plants? If I poured, for example, a can of Coke over over the soil and watered my plant with it, would it die? No. It's not going to die. If I feed that plant a can of Coke every day for seven days, it's going to die. So that's kind of my plug for any of the carnivores out there that want to still eat occasionally some chicken. It's not going to kill you. But if you eat something that's not good for you over and over and over and over and over, are you going to run optimally? No. That's why athletes, you know, the Olympics, they're, they're a very specific diet because they're feeding this body like a machine for it to run optimally. So when we talk about optimal health, now we're talking about growing things. So first of all, as a black man, I know that my age group, I need to have more, for example, beets uh, for, for those out there that might be suffering with hypertension, right? Uh, obesity, there's certain plants that you feed yourself, it's going to start growing optimally. I said plants. There's certain nutrients that you put in your body that will make your body grow optimally the same way we do here. The reason why our cannabis is so popular and so good and so loud and all that is because I know how to manipulate the the nutrients that I feed that plant at different stages of its growth for it to grow optimally. Now, applying that to myself, I stopped eating besides much meat. I'm doing a lot of plant-based. So I'm big on like Beyond Meat, Impossible, whatever, all these plant-based that you're seeing popping up left and right. That's better for you than the carnivores, right? It's better. But I'm to the point now where I want to grow the nutrients and grow the plants in here so I can make my own Beyond Meat, right? So I can make my own plant-based. We did it the other night. We had a plant. I had a chicken. It wasn't real chicken, but it sure tasted like it. It was I made a chicken patty out of vegetable protein and kind of doctored it up and cooked it in the kitchen and did all that. But all these things come from plants. So it's amazing, like the carnivores out there who have a slab of meat, you're using plants to season it. That seasoning that you put on it, all that is ground up plants. So you need plants to make your meat taste tasty. So okay. it's, so that's kind of the, 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 you know, the angle that we're going when we talk about growing our food, because we need to learn how to grow things that are beneficial to us. And really, if you can deal with the texture and the taste, does it matter what you're eating? You want it to taste good and you want it to resemble something that's that's going to satiate you. Plants can do that every day. We're talking about so the next iteration of our course, we're going to teach people how to grow mushrooms in the privacy of their own home and other vegetables. So we're doing that. But there's certain lists, and I know you have probably a good list of everything that you can grow. Whatever you can grow uh, outdoors, if you don't have the land. For example, because you need, you know, back in the day, they used to dig trenches and plow field and they'd plant and for every, before they drop the seed, they would dig a hole and they would take a fish head or fish guts and they'd throw it down in there and then they'd plant the seed and cover it up. Why? Because fish, and that as it, de- as it, as it, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking decomposes. for? Uh, decomposes, thank you. Uh, it releases nitrogen potassium and phosphorus, things that plants eat, right? So we're just simulating mother nature here in our studio. And we have a system where everything behind me, it looks big because it's big and behind me, but it's about the size of a queen size bed that can fit. Literally when I first started, I had this garden in the same bedroom that I had my, my, my bed. It wasn't, it was a tight fit, but I was that committed to growing vegetables in the privacy of my home so that I could teach other people. I had the first show that I could do it. So I've kind of mastered this process and you don't need the big field. You don't need all that. You can do this in a small apartment. And that's kind of what we teach in our curriculum. 
Yes, we teach people how to grow cannabis because it's extremely lucrative. But what's about to be just as lucrative is learning how to grow your own vegetables because if you are paying attention to the news, they're coming for us. They're about to take your vegetables, with whether it's the GMOs or whether it's you're noticing now eggs are like the price of Lexus, you know, a Lexus or a Benz. It's because they're slowly starting to have these trickle down effects where getting natural food is harder. What they want is the delivery of your food to your home and it's not going to be healthy. And you all know that just based on what I just said, if what you put in your body over time, it deteriorates you, then that's the angle. So learn how to grow your own food and you can do it. You can use this space behind you to grow tomatoes, to grow cucumbers, to grow healthy things. So the first thing I hope we talk about Sai, is a list of foods that our people need, like the basics, the necessities that we need to have, and then learn how to grow it. Right. Because everybody knows we don't even know how to cook it. We're still worried about what temperature. What is this vegetable? How do I cook it? How does it because it's not coming from McDonald's. Right. Right. So first, before we even learn how to cook stuff, we need to learn how to grow it. Yeah, how to grow it. That's right. That's right. So one of the benefits of having to cook is you figure those things out along the way. So if you can learn so much from YouTube and you see uh, classes being advertised to cook in, in um, to cook uh, vegan food or plant-based food, vegetarian food. I see advertisements for learning how to can your food. There is a social media movement that is really teaching us what our great grandparents used to know because it was t- it was passed down from parent to child and it was just normal and common. It, wa- it wasn't something that was so spectacular and special. It was just normal and common and that was allowed. So, so those are the types of things that you do see that's available. So I have a pop quiz question for those of you in the audience. Who knows what heirloom means and who knows what organic means? And is there a difference? And if there is, what is it? I'm gonna just let that, that's kind of a long question. What's heirloom and what's organic? That's easier. What is heirloom and what is organic? What does that mean? So I'm going to let that question sit for a minute, and I'm going to go back to what we were what we were talking about. Yeah, that's I, I'd like to know that difference of heirloom and organic. <laughs> I always wonder sometimes when you go to the store, because I'm one of those curious dudes. We go to Safeway. I've been to Kroger. I don't know where you guys are at, what stores you have, but they're all the same. You understand when you see fresh vegetables on your grocery market and they have the little mister thing and they even have, you know, it starts thundering and then it mist over your vegetables. Right. right right. Those vegetables have probably been there for two weeks before it even got to that, you know, there. So and then it spent two weeks in the semi truck and then it came two weeks from a farm that we don't know where it came from. And we don't know what pesticides they're putting on it. And we don't know what is because some vegetables like tomatoes. I wash. I literally will take it to the sink, take a little soapy rag, and I'll wipe out the outside and rinse it off. Um, but you can't do that with mushrooms. You can't do that with porous. That's correct, right? Because yep. you it's so. But we so we don't know what pesticides and even the tomatoes that I wash off. Have you ever had a tomato, you guys? And you cut into it. It's juicy. It's red, but it tastes like cardboard. It doesn't have any taste at all. And that's because they've been mass produced in some lab where, and that's not what we're doing here. Like I've grown tomatoes in here. I've grown vegetables in here and I've grown tomatoes and you probably have in your backyard. Um, If you have a patio, you don't need all this fancy equipment to grow just so you know. Right. If you have have a patio and the sun hits it. But in this course, we teach you how to utilize the sun's natural rays to grow your food and and there is a science to it but but if you've grown stuff at home that tomato you notice the taste of the tomato that you've grown at home even if you use miracle grow which is crappy miracle grow that they sell at home depot is not what you want to use in terms of amended soil we teach you how to make your own amended soil but if you're going to start somewhere right Right, there's a lot of people that's going to tell me that beyond meat is crappy it is 
it's better than the riblet from McDonald's, you know? So you start somewhere, but the plant-based movement and treating your body better is a movement. The best way to do it, start from scratch, grow it at home, learn how to grow it. And when you taste it and when you make that fresh salad, that has cucumbers and peppers and everything. Else, even if you make some, some plant-based meat substitute, it's way better and extreme, way cheaper than going to Kroger, going to Applebee's, you know, going somewhere else and eating that processed food. It's way better for you. And your body will thank you. I know for a fact, like everything from bowel movements to you name it, if we just be in 100 because we grow in here, right? Everything has been better once I started treating my body better. So I'm going to jump in and Robert just stole my bowel movement thunder because I was going to jump in and talk about the BMs. So to, <laughs> to go back to what one of the things he said, there are a couple of two things I want to focus in on or zoom in on for what he was saying. Your taste buds are acclimated to one to either healthy food or processed food. Now, my mom, she cooked everything fresh. She cooked every day. We were talk just talking about this tonight because I was talking to her tonight when I was cooking. She cooked every day. She wasn't big on, on leftovers and everything was fresh. And 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 for as long as I can remember, every time I ate, I would go, I would go to the bathroom, go number two. You should be that regular. You should eat and poop in a cycle. The, the when you when you uh, are are eliminating, it's not what you just ate, it's what you ate prior to the meal that you just ate. It's like a meal behind. Okay, that's why in the morning you should go number two because that's the, that's the meal you had in your body that your body was either digesting or getting ready for you to eliminate it in the morning, okay? When you eat healthy foods, when you eat real food, when you eat leafy green vegetables, you will go number two regularly. If you are currently eating processed foods, and you want to make that switch to natural foods and real foods, here are a couple recommendations and some warnings, okay? If you want to ease into it, that's fine. And then what you would do by that is just replace one thing over another. Like, for example, you might say, I'm going to stop eating fast food for three days a week. I'm only going to do four days a week. Taking baby steps, right? So maybe, maybe you replace frequency. Maybe you change locations. Maybe you say, instead of going to fast food restaurant A, I'm going to go to this mom and pop restaurant where, you know, the people who own the place also cook the food or something along those lines. You could do it like that. Um, I personally go cold turkey. Years ago, a long, long time. And I always ate really healthy, but sometimes we eat things that are in a box. In a Not box. always. Come on. Let's tell the I truth. Said some, I said most of the time. I didn't say always. I'm playing with you. So... What I did was I, I, I threw everything away that was in a box, that was in a bag. I went cold turkey on the salt. I went cold turkey on the sugar. I went cold turkey. I'm not going to lie. I had a headache and I was annoyed. I was like, Ugh! but I only felt like that for a couple of days. And then yeah. what you do is you either acclimate your taste buds to healthy food or you reacclimate it to healthy foods. Now, I just reacclimated it to healthy foods because that's how my mama raised me, right? If you continue along the path of eating healthy foods, your taste buds are going to be acclimated to, for that. And then over time, and not as long as you might think, you're not even going to want to eat processed food. You're not even going to want to eat eat um, bad food. And then if you crave it and you eat it, it's going to taste bad. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I used to like Taco Bell. I'm going to tell y'all my little dirty eating secrets. I used to eat Taco Bell. It was a cheat meal. And I used to love it. But then once I stopped and really was dedicated to eating healthy, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to get me some Taco Bell. It, it'll be okay. I would eat it. It was nasty. It tasted bad because my taste buds had changed. Then, I, you know, right. my belly didn't like it. It was just a hot mess. Okay. Yeah. My recommendation is that you just go cold turkey because going cold turkey, you get to feel the withdrawal symptoms. You get the headaches. You get agitated. And what that's saying to you is you had an addiction to this processed food, to the salt, to the sugar, and to the fat. You know why? Because salt, sugar, and fat taste good. Yeah. It tastes good in a processed kind of way, like being addicted to a, a chemical substance like a drug or alcohol. 
That's really what it is. So go cold, go cold turkey so you can really appreciate the process of detoxifying yourself from this. And when you substitute that with healthy food, you're going to go to the bathroom. You're going to go number two. You might get bubble guts, but it's worth it. Okay? Yeah. Listen, well, it, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is, and it's something that, that, that we have to do. I'm going to give you one easy slipping way to get into making that change. If you have this little spicy tea, you can put, um, let, me just, let me just do it even easier. Pick a tea that you like, get an organic lemon. Organic lemons help you go number two. Conventional lemons don't. I can tell the difference between an organic lemon and a conventional lemon, lemon because the conventional lemons have thicker skins and they don't help you go number two. They don't even taste the same. Organic lemons do. Like I said, I'm good with that, but I'm just saying, if you want a place to start, that's a very easy, easy entry point. And then you'll really know, you won't have to believe, but you'll know that there is power in natural foods and you can start your journey right there. Yeah. Well, you know, and something else to, to consider, like I told you, I'm transitioning from eating less meat, a real easy one that helped me. And hopefully I'll pass this on to everybody, the listeners, uh, the watchers. It helps them. I try now to make 75% of my plate vegetables. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to eat meat, cool for now, you know, and cool if that's what you choose. I believe you should do what thou wilt, do whatever you want. But just understand how the body works and how it processes things so that when you're in your 60s and your 70s and your 80s, you don't want to die like Elvis. You know, Elvis died <laughs> on the toilet because he was so compacted that. That, I mean, that's not what you want. Now, true, he was taking drugs so much that it, it really did that to him. But meat. That can happen through food. Yeah, it will. And on top of it, think about it. The, the, you mentioned sugar. Let's talk about a, remember a Michelle Obama, one of the greatest uh, uh, first ladies we've ever had in, in this country. She was huge on healthy eating, right? She was big. Remember Michelle Obama with little... With a little one outfit on and she was oh wow she's a fine first lady and she was doing all the exercises with the kids and everything was great till she tried to take sugar out of them schools mm. when she went after the sugar company you stop hearing about all that healthy eating they even mm. shut her down so there is a campaign against being healthy right absolutely and that's where the pharmaceutical company comes in they don't want you they want to treat you they want to treat a disease. There's a reason why NyQuil was the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, stuffy ache fever, so you can rest medicine, right? If you look in the back of that bottle, it says it treats the following symptoms, runny nose, stuffy head, headache, all that. But it doesn't cure the problem. You want to cure the problem of getting a cold, stop running outside with your head wet, you know, after you get out of the shower or whatever. Right. You got to build your right. immunity system. But these companies out here are not designed to to, to cure the problem, whether that problem is cancer or the common cold, right? They're there mm-hmm. to make money off the symptoms and treating you. So we have to change that, that narrative and say, let's cure the problem. Well, the problem is what happens when you eat, you know, a Popeye's chicken sandwich? It sits in your gut, goes through your small intestines, it sits there for a long time, trying, your body's trying to break down all the nastiness that not necessarily for those carnivores out there, is not necessarily the chicken itself. It's all that they do to pump that chicken up to make it so big and right. flavorful it's that your body has to process and break down. Your liver has to process it. Your kidneys have to process it, right? All these organs have to process this crap. And before but before you can even finish processing the crap, you you put another one of them in, in your system. <laughs> it's and true. It's so what does your body do? It, it starts rebelling and it, it comes out of your pores and it comes out and through your body and so you have to understand how the pharmacology of your body works it starts with what you're putting in it it starts if you want to know the outcome start looking at the income at the right income. That's and right. so we're teaching in our course of how to grow cannabis but it's just as easy you swap out cannabis with vegetables swap out that with anything it's the same plant and it's understanding the science of how to grow that plant properly. 
because the alternative is going to Kroger and picking it up in the little vegetable aisle that you think that it's healthy for you. And that's for the few people that decide they want to eat vegetables, right? Right. Most people right. aren't even heading to the vegetable aisle at a Kroger or a grocery store. They're heading to the deli or they're heading to the, the aisles that have all the boxes and the cans. And that's how we feed our, our families. Yeah. Why? Because it's convenient, right? But this is convenient too. You don't right. have to go outside it's and get a pack and you don't have to get a mule. You don't need a mule to do this. You don't even need 40 acres. You need a space that's eight feet by four feet, that space, which is about the size of a, a bed. And you need the knowledge of how to grow so that eventually in a few months, you can go here and get your, a whole salad. Even if it's a fried chicken salad, you're going to make your own chicken. I'm not suggesting you can, you can grow chickens in this tent, but you right. can grow all the vegetables and everything else that goes with it. So now you're leaning towards a healthy diet, right? Right. And right. you're knowing what you're putting into your body. So even if you do go out and decide to have chicken wings, 80% of the rest of your diet is healthy and you're going to live longer. Sai, let me ask everybody who's listening and put it, please put in the comment. Have, when's the last time you've seen a 90 year old obese person? 400 pounds, never 90 years old, never, you know why? Cause they don't make it that long. They don't make it there. They don't make it there because you've stressed every square inch of your body from the inside out and your organs just give way period. That's why it's your body is not designed to be that particular size. But be before we go off a little bit, I want to kind of get back to what we should be growing and to answer the question of what's the difference between heirloom and organic. Jason, yeah, Jason, said, Jason actually answered that in the comments. Right. Jason said heirloom is a valuable object passed down through a family for several generations. And then organic means related to or derived from living matter. Now, so these are really great answers and I'm going to show you how they're related to seeds An heirloom seed means that it is non it is not or non genetically modified organism it's not created by man it's created by the divine and so it's heirloom because it goes back generations before uh there were genetically modified organism organisms or genetically modified seeds so in the general answer heirloom is a val valuable object passed down through a family for several generations heirloom seeds are valuable objects that are passed down way, way back from many generations back. So that's what heirloom means. Organic means, and Jason answered and it said, organic means relating to or derived from, uh, from living matter. As it pertains to planting and seeds, organic means that it was not grown in, in any chemicals or, or, or um, pesticides. So basically chemical free, okay? Now, I'm going to be giving you general answers or general information and you got to take it from there uh, and i had that's one of the reasons why i have robert here you can also dm with any questions um and and i can give you some reputable sources but those are the differences but that that is the difference between heirloom and organic so right. i ha i have um some seeds sites that uh i have ordered from or i'm going to order from either i've ordered or i'm going to order from them and one is melanated organics. C Cheryl, can you uh, drop that in the in the chat? I'd like to look at some of the rest of the comments. Um, Sanisi says Anka Maat, um, Anka Maat. Um, Valerie says that she's learning her way in the garden. Yeah, because you know when my mom and I started gardening, you uh, you put it in the ground. Eventually, something gonna come up. We don't have to overthink this. You so, know what I'm well, yeah, but let me, can I chime in on that? Yeah, go ahead. So, yes and no, right? Mm -hmm. So, what we teach in our course, so just to like clarify, we teach you the pharmacology of this plant, right? We teach you, like, I can grab a plant. Let me do that real quick. Show you guys. We teach you 
in our place. Oops. I messed up my equipment. All right. So we teach you in this course, like, how we'll take something from a seed. I don't know if you can see that. We can see it. It's good. Yeah, thank you. So this is a particular strain, right? And you see that says BGB? It's good right there. That's the strain that this particular plant is. This particular plant is going to be fed nutrients differently than the one next to it over there. I could grab it. But you need to know everything about the plant, right? So you know how to feed it. And this whole class and course that we're teaching can be applicable to whether to anything, whether it's tomatoes, cucumbers, they all grow the same way, right? Understanding that is how you're going to determine the nutrients you give something. So if you give it the right nutrients, it'll grow and produce fruit that's going to benefit your body. So when you eat it, it goes in and it processes. Your body's like, ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy because you're not feeding it McDonald's. You're not feeding it crappy stuff. You got to give your body a chance to heal and tr take care of you because this is the only one you get. This is it. And what happens is you, you get signs along the way. Starts with heartburn, starts with gas, it starts with all kinds of other stuff. What do we do? We go get some tums. We go get something else, right? We shouldn't be doing that. We should be finding out what the blockage is and what's that because eventually your body's going to get to the point where it's like it's not responding to you anymore because it realizes you're trying to kill it and it's going to do exactly what you do. It dies. The same way if I keep giving this plant Coca Cola every day, it's going to try its best to stay alive, but eventually, that's it. And then you're at a downward spiral. Now you're in now you're in diabetes. I don't know if you even talked about that in your in your show, but what uh going to what's the treatment for diabetes? Going to uh um transfusions and you go to the, yeah, that's a nightmare. There's something that it's called when you uh, dialysis? Yeah, but thank you, dialysis. When you go in, that's a nightmare. You that's a spiral that you can't get out of unless you're really serious. And how do you get out of it? The same way if I got a sick plant that was on its last leg, the first thing I would do is cleanse it, right? I'd flush the plant. And then I'd start backfilling it with good stuff to offset the crappy state that it's in, right? Human body's no different. The way you're gonna fix a lot of these ailments that you may start seeing and having is growing some good stuff. And you're not going to get that at Kroger. You're not going to get that at Win Dixie or what Safeway or wherever grocery store you're going to, because they are not your friend. They want you to not eat any of that stuff. Even their vegetables are crappy. But the vegetables are crappy than buying McDonald's. But the game is rigged against us. So the only way to fix it is you got to invest. The same way you invest in your physical body by going to the gym. The same way you invest in your spiritual body by going to church, the same way you invest in your mental body by going to the, the shrink. Your physical is the first starter. You got to change. You got to make a decision. I'm going to stop smoking. Is, is it going to be easy? No. Sugar is the biggest drug to kick. It right? really is. It so is, is it going to be easy? No. But if it was easy, everybody would be living to 100. And it's not a big deal now, but it's a big deal when you can't breathe, when you can't you use the bathroom, and all of a sudden well, now it's triage. It's right. And we want to prevent triage and live um, a, a, a healthy life. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a lot easier than it sounds. And yes, there is a, a an uptick in, in terms of the curve to learn, but it's not, it's not you know, that, that completely difficult. Um, no. So I have a couple questions that I would like for you to answer. Um, uh, Robert, I have, um, what are your thoughts about worm tea for fertilizer and pesticide? Before you answer that question, can you define what is worm tea, what is fertilizer, and what is pesticide? So worm tea is a generic name for, uh, did you disappear on me? I, <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Worm <laughs> tea is a generic term for like compost tea, right? Mm -hmm. So compost tea. So 
basically when you feed plants, you feed it water and you could go buy some miracle Grow, which is your soil. It has nutrients embedded into the soil. You feed it water, the water mixes with the nutrients and the roots absorb the water and then it uptakes into the plant, right? So compost tea are things like bat guano or, and, and so we talk about, wow, bat guano, bat, bat crap, right? Or, or manure, or what are these things and how does it transfer into the plant? Well, what happens is it breaks down in the soil and the soil breaks it down through sunlight, through photosynthesis, and through other means, and it converts it into the nutrients that the plant needs, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. So that's another way to infuse your plants. We teach that. We have, we can, I, I've taught how to make your own compost tea, uh, worm tea. Worms themselves, when they break down and die, they decompose into some of these nutrients the same way fish does. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, not necessarily breaking everything down and, and but you have to know why and what you're breaking down and that's a whole science that's kind of what we teach but beyond that if you just wanted to start by getting some miracle grow and growing a tomato plant that tomato plant that you grow with miracle grow is going to be better than the one you get in Kroger it's going to be better because you're not spraying any pesticides i i'm in the cannabis industry so I've dealt with people and there's people out there who, you know, there's predatory insects that get on the plants, just mm -hmm. like here. they could get on there. Right. So maybe their answer is a spray raid, literally <laughs> like spray raid on the cannabis. It'll kill the weed. And then when you smoke it, you wonder why you high as a kite. It's because you, you're smoking insectus. So what's in raid? I don't know. Right. It's not good. I wouldn't want to smoke it. <laughs> you wouldn't want to eat it. Right. right. You don't want to eat it. There's farms out there right now that spray and raid on your tomatoes that you get out of Kroger. How would you know? How would you know? You wonder why your children might have ADD or whatever other stuff. There's it's not rocket science what we're doing. It's science, but it's not <laughs> make rocket science. But you do need to know what you're putting in your body. And right. just because it looks shiny. And it looks all pretty when you see it in Kroger sitting there, have the little mist and the thunder sounds. When you eat that, what are you really eating? Do you know? Right. Do you know? That was that was one of the ways I posed the question for tonight. Like, do you know what you're eating? What are you eating? You know? Um, so here's another one that I wanted to address. Also, take the time to examine your poop. Example, shape, color, parasites. When I was a little girl, my mom told me, Saeed, when you go poop or number two or whatever she said, let don't flush it, let me see it. So yeah. my mom checked my poop every when I was a little kid. She checked my poop. Thought that was normal. And because she checked my poop, I checked my poop. I still check my poop. And here's something that you the information you get from your poop. Your poop should not be like this putrid, awful smell. Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that my poop. Mine smells good. like Dracar cologne. <laughs> From the 90s? <laughs> 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 smells like, yep, polo cologne. <laughs> well, your poop might not smell like Dracar uh, cologne, but it shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't really have a really bad smell. That's the first thing. The right. second thing is the girth of your poop is the, is the, is the clearance passageway of your colon. Mm. So if, if let's say this is the size of a colon and I'm just using this cause this is the circumference of my fingers. All right. So let's say your colon is this big, but your poop is like this. That means that you have all the, the difference between this and this is impacted fecal matter. It's poop. You're, you, you've got poop. Like you got money. leftover. You got leftover stuff hanging leftover. out there for months. That's right. And so the girth of your poop is directly proportionate to the girth of your intestines, your the descending colon. All right. And the last thing that you get from your poop is the frequency of when you poop. 
every time you eat, yeah. you should poop. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So now I will, I will say one, this. One quick thing. You, so yeah. to sum up, you have the smell, the size, and the frequency. And, and, you know, and I'm not going to tell y'all my age or anything, but my mama was doing all of this back in the day. Telling your age by talking about bowel movements. First of all, we were on <laughs> social media. We're, we're, on a, we're on a stream where we're talking about bowel movements. So I can pretty much guarantee you everybody's age on this call. Don't be telling my age, Robert. I don't have to. Our subject matter is telling it. We're talking about bowel movements, which we, we should just we're using the word bowel movement. My daughter is not. My daughter is 20, 20, and she wouldn't be on this call at all. Talk about she bowel movement. have nothing to do with it, but she eats very healthy. Right. She eats very healthy. Right, right, right. Okay, so I hope y'all are taking notes. We're laughing about bowel movements, ha ha ha. But it's but this is this these are these are markers, so that you can know what's going on inside your body and what's going yeah. on inside your body is what you put in your mouth. The yeah. other thing is this. You should, your armpits should not stink. If you're eating healthy food and you're eating organic food and you're working out and sweating and releasing, your armpits aren't gonna stink. So if your armpits stink, you do a pit stick, you just do a little pit check, then that is really, an, it, your, your body talks to you. Your body is telling you what's going on with you. If you have headaches, when you stop e eating the sugar, if you poop, has is thin if you stink in the pits your body your skin is something your skin going is on. the biggest organ that you have right. so when you have lesions or anything your body takes in alkaline and it it exports acid right so if that acid can't get out of your body fast enough through sweat which is your pores through poop or through urine. Those are the three ways your body eliminates anything, right? right. So you just sweat it out, you pee it out, or you poop it out. Right. If your body is overloaded in any of those, the only other place it tries to get rid of stuff, through your skin. So you have lesions, you have acne, you have pore. That means that's, a, that's an indication that you are too acidic, right? That's why we drink alkaline water. If you don't, you should. And we should take in foods that are alkaline when you eat them. When you right? eat them, right, right, right. Okay, I wanna get, before I answer this question, um, Richard Sheffield, you said you missed the opportunity for initiation in December. We're still taking applications. So you can go to shrineofmaat.org and the applications are there, okay? Okay. Um, Healthy doesn't make, okay, no, that's not the one I was, um, this is the one where it said. Um, well, healthy doesn't make money for them. Whoever said that was right. They, it doesn't, the whole purpose of them giving you these treatments like the NyQuil and everything is to treat the symptoms. They don't want you to not have the disease. Disease is a moneymaker. Cancer is a moneymaker. They got the cure for right. a kind of cold right now. Right. They released well, it. All these companies like NyQuil, like Comtrex, like. Tylenol, all these companies would go out of business overnight. Robert, Robert, but we're just we're just gonna stick to growing the food. I'm sorry. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So right. Matt Smith brought up a really good question that Robert and I uh, talked about beforehand because if you've got tons of money and tons of time and tons of land, you can grow tons of food. But what if you live in public housing? What if you live in public housing in New York City where there's not a whole lot of space? What if you live in just a regular old apartment and there's no land to grow anywhere? So he says growing your food is tough. Now, that is definitely true, but it's not impossible, number one. Number two, it's worth it. And then it gets easier because then you get innovative with how and where you can grow. And you also can tap into farmer's markets where you have an opportunity to meet people who actually grow their food. And some, and some farmers will let you go to their farm so you can see what they're using. You can see what they're eating. They're pulling food out of the ground and eating it themselves. So those are ways that you can um, kind of make it a little bit easier. But before we just keep it general, um, Robert, can you can you kind of shed some light on growing your growing your own food is tough, especially as it pertains to living in a sure. Yeah. So I, I mentioned it earlier, but 
like I said, I teach a curriculum on how to grow cannabis, swap out cannabis with tomato plant, right? Um, I have this particular setup that you see behind me in my bedroom, right? Being an NBA basketball player is tough too, but there's a whole bunch of people who are. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So that's the first right. thing. Uh, it's not as hard as you think. Everything is hard until right. you know how to do it, right? Right. So everything, I mean, I teach people. I have a lot of single women. Uh, and I point out the sexism to say that I got single women putting together this equipment by themselves with ease, right? And then I teach them step by step. So after the 16 weeks that they've learned how to do this, it's not hard anymore. Now they know. Now they have the ability to grow anything, anything. I've always said, Cy, that I would never be homeless if actually I've been homeless. If homeless means I don't have an address that's mine, I fit that definition before, right? I could be literally homeless in the street with the knowledge that I have. I would take a cannabis seed, grow outside, hang out for two months. I take the proceeds from that cannabis. Next thing you know, I'm in an extended stay and I'm shaving again and I'm back in the game. So in terms of the money aspect, the difficulty aspect, you can learn this. You should learn this right now. It's convenient for you not to because you feel like you have choices. I don't have to do any of this stuff. I can go to Kroger. I can go to Safeway. I can get my vegetables. I hear what he's saying. I'll just shop organically and I'll do that. What happens when they stop putting vegetables out there? What happens when they stop doing that? And don't think that that won't happen. And it may not be, here's how it's going to happen. It may not no, be Jerry, something that happens. Robert, let's just stay, let's just stay right on, on this topic. I don't want to, I don't want to veer into that space. Okay. Just, just well, the space that I was the space that I was taking it is if food is taken off the shelves and you have to know what you're doing, what are your choices then, right? So you have to start being creative and learning how to grow in the privacy of your own home. That's just the future because you can't guarantee that fresh vegetables are going to be available to you. That was where I was going with it, but yeah, okay. Um so so oh, so I have I have one of the websites, melanatedorganics.com. You, I've, I've looked at the website. That's one of the websites that I that I recommended. Annie's heirlooms. I'll put that in the chat as well because um, those are those are heirloom seeds, and Annie's has been around for a very long time. If anybody, oh sorry, if anybody has had um, have, has heard of melanated organics or annie's heirlooms if you could just pl please put it in the chat i just want to know if annie's is big outside of the northeast because growing up i always heard of of, of annie's um i had a, a, a question can you give the name of your course yes yeah, it's, it's let's grow inside if you go to our website let's grow inside mm -hmm. let's grow inside .com, it will give you access to our particular course that we're teaching people how to grow in the privacy of their home. Can you, can, um, uh, I think it's Jason, Jason, can you drop the website? Let's grow inside. And we can, we can, um, I'll highlight that. J uh, he, Jason is his middle name. So I, I keep calling him, him Jason. Sorry, Robert. I was going to say, which Jason are you talking about? But I know. Right. <laughs> um, have you tried the vinegar and water neem oil, eucalyptus oil, if, if, if for making uh, for using that as a pesticide spray? Are you familiar with that? So I've used neem oil. Um, I've not used. I think you said vinegar. I've not used that. I've used neem oil and a soap to make a natural pesticide. We mm -hmm. teach a little bit deeper than that in our course of how to do preventative maintenance for 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 pest prevention. Um, but I'm familiar with neem oil, right? Because basically the science behind that is the oil uh, suffocates, the oil, the combination of the oil, natural oil and soap suffocates any predatory insects so that it, it doesn't uh, survive and feast on your plant, right? Okay. So we teach, we teach some of that. 
natural because what we're all about is not putting pesticides, you know, onto the stuff that we put in our body. You can eat neem oil. I mean, neem oil, you can ingest neem, neem oil. Right, right, right. Uh, so, uh, Robert, can you show us your your website? I want to I want to show some of that because I know. Uh, yeah, it. tell me how to do it. I'll do it for you. So the other you you have the other uh, page up right with your website. I do. Yeah, and then um, there's there should be a button that says share your screen. You would think. I'm sorry. I said you would think. <laughs> it's not there. I mean, <laughs> you mean a streamyard? No, on your on your page. Well, I I know how to go to my page. So I, I know how to do that. <laughs> okay. Wait, share. Am I putting the link somewhere? No, it should say um, some back office stuff. No, no. So I, I, I had technical difficulties last Tuesday talk. I'm not going to spend a whole, a whole lot of time trying to figure it out because I have the link where everybody should go. But there was a way we, we kind of did this before where, um, where we were able to share the screen. Well, if you're in StreamYard, you can uh, present. You can go to present. I use StreamYard. You can go to present and share a screen and you can pull it up on your end because you're the host. So I do know that. I don't see it. I don't. I'm on my phone. I don't see it here. Darn oh, you got your phone. Okay. Yeah. But I have to, okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, the workaround for that is everybody can remember this. Instead of let's go inside, is let's grow inside. Yeah. And look it up, and there's the website, and you'll see it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, just for the for the viewers, what we do is we teach you. We over 16 weeks we have a curriculum. So the first thing that happens is you order all the stuff that we have behind me. Uh, you can go to my website, the website, let's grow inside.com and go to the equipment page, order all this stuff. So you'll see we have a charcoal filter. We have self watering pots, uh, oscillating fans. We have a digital uh, control system that's right above the camera that you can use, but, and we, you buy all the equipment, then you pay for the course, right? And then we teach you how to put this equipment together. You can do this by yourself. Uh, I'll walk you through it. Uh, then we teach you how to plant, literally, literally buy the seed, plant it. We teach you how to propagate it. You take your pinky and you stick it, you know, how far down. And then we teach you how the depth of where to plant the seed. And then the seed sprouts. And then this seed is gonna go from this temporary home into the permanent home that you see behind me there. And then we have a reservoir where we feed our plants from the bottom, not for, so we don't water it from the top, right? right? We, feed it, we make the roots go find the water and then we feed it from the bottom and we feed it specific nutrients. And then we teach you how to grow this plant into this amazing, beautiful plant and create buds for those who are in the cannabis industry. For, for those that aren't, you learn how to grow fruit, those tomatoes, the zucchini, the peppers, the everything with the proper nutrients in that fruit so that when you eat it, it's going to be beneficial to you. Not like the green peppers that you get at the grocery store because they don't have any nutrients because they didn't feed the plant nutrients. They just fed it so that it could grow and look like that's right a pepper. But the nutrients that are in it, here's a here's a perfect one, a freebie tip, a pro tip for people, because you said I like to cook, which I do. I used to have a restaurant and I used to take natural vegetables and make them taste really tasty, right? Really tasty. So for those of you guys that like collard greens, like love collard greens, here's a pro tip. Next time you get collard greens, you know, you get the green, the, the leaf and it has the stem, right? And what we do is we cut that stem out and then we keep the leaf. Right. We cut the stem out and we keep the leaf and then we cook the leaves. I'm suggesting that you take the stem. You don't throw it away. You take that stem, which is packed with nutrients and you put that in your pot and you boil it for like a couple, like an hour. And you boil all those nutrients and then you take those wilted stems, shake them out and you throw them away. What's left behind in that water 
is the nutrients. We call it pot liquor. Your grandma used to call it pot liquor. That's right. That's right. That pot liquor is full of nutrients that came from the stem. Then you take your smoked turkey or you, whatever you want to do and you put it in there or not. And you take your, your uh, leaves and you cook them. And then those leaves have now soaked in all the nutrients. So when you eat it, now you're getting the nutrients, not just the flavor. And with that, we need to drop his Zell and um, in the chat because that was a gem right there. And I remember my collard greens taste really good. You had them, Sai. Come on. Listen, I, see, I want him about to tell all of Robert's business. He's been a businessman. He's 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 been he's owned a restaurant. Robert can cook, and he's a great speaker. I've heard him. I've heard him give speeches. And I had a little crush on him at one point, but don't wow. tell us. <laughs> this is my and first so, time knowing it. <laughs> and so, and he, we were on the phone talking one night. We used to, we would video chat and cause we're both talkers. So we want to see each other. And he was like, he, you had a speech. And he was like, do you want to hear, do you want to hear it? I was like, yeah. And he was, he was giving me this, this, this speech that he had given. And then he was like, you sure you want to hear the rest of it? I was like, yeah. And I just listened to him talk. Why? because he can explain something very well by setting up a nice structure. It's almost like a table of contents. And then you get the speech, you get the information and it makes a whole lot of sense. And, and I've, I've seen um, the, 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 the program that he has. I've seen other things that he's grown. He's shown me that he's grown in that particular or in those kind of spaces. Also what he's grown outside. Robert has grown stuff in the brick 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 winter or whatever climate yeah. in the midwest in the cold parts of ohio right that's where he's from so when when so one of the reasons why i had him back was because listen i'm from connecticut i live in new york city i understand cold and you want to grow and it's cold and you got friends who live in miami and they grow big tropical caribbean fruits because miami is 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 just a name but it's in the caribbean climate it's the most, right. it's one of the most Southern, I'm uh, sorry, Northern parts of the Caribbean. If you're looking at it just naturally. And as far as those, those uh, growing zones are concerned, Miami is the Caribbean, Connecticut ain't the Caribbean, but, but Robert can, can grow it in those spaces. So it's really, it's really worth it for you to, um, to take a look. Um, thank you, Cheryl, Matt, Matt, um, who was it? Matt Smith wants us to do a, a talk show together. You and you and me. So we can talk about some of the other topics. And Sunette Cheryl found this one. If you go back to the Shrine of My Op page and look for Tuesday Talk, April 18th, Robert was there. And in, in that, and Matt, I'm talking specifically to you and generally to everybody else. In that Tuesday Talk, we were able to see the grow inside. We were able to see some of the pages that he had. Okay, so I think that that would answer you know, some of the questions, some of the questions that you had. Um, so I, I put up Annie's heirloom. I see we have Hapi in the chat. We have Felicia in the chat. A quick sidebar that's very important. Um, Hapi Films is having a, a day of black excellence this Saturday and in, in Queens. And uh, I'm going to put in my affiliate link or Felicia, if you could drop the affiliate link for me for that event. Kaba Khomeini is going to be there. Uh, Riza Islam. We've got um, Kenneth. Do you did you know Kenneth? He pledged Omega at Clark. Uh, I think so. Yeah, Fred he's, Track maybe. I think maybe. Yeah, maybe he he's gonna be uh, the moderator of the event. We've got. Uh, did I say Kaba's gonna be there? Um, it's 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 really gonna be an amazing event. Okay. Uh, Grand Puba and Lord Jamar are gonna be there. Abu Jamar from the Shrine of Ma'at will be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be so much fun, you guys. So come to this event and um, and, and, and we'll see you there. Here it is. <laughs> Felicia said he played ba basketball to make your That's first nice. Black History Month this year an epic event. Yes, join Hapi as we celebrate a day of Black excellence in Queens, New York on February 4th, either in person or live stream. Okay. And Felicia said that he played basketball too. So it's the same Kenneth. So yes. So anyway, yep. so yes, guys, show up to that on, on Saturday. That type of stuff reaffirms doing what's hard, which is living a healthy, authentic self. 
and and going to events like this where you see and you're around other like-minded people i am surviving surviving vegan she's going to be there i don't know her real name or her name name um uh orisha oshun she goes by that she's going to be there so that would be an opportunity for you to ask exactly uh, you know any questions you have oh so so to answer your question Cynthia, it's i i would have to look at the actual flyer to know but you, you, you can be able to get that information of where exactly in Queens by going to um, to the link that I've highlighted. And you'll be able to find it right there. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be writing in with a friend. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's a good question, though. So, yes, if you want to see some of the other conversation that Robert and I have had, go to the April 19th, 2022 uh, uh, Tuesday talk. So now, guys. I have a top 10 list of easy uh, vegetables that you can grow and their nutritional value. Number 10, and this is in no particular order, cabbage. Now, cabbage was playing games with me, y'all. I'm not going to lie. Because I would get the cabbage, but it was only like a couple heads of cabbage. And I felt like if this is going to be what I do all summer, I should have more. Okay. However, I did grow them and the cabbage leaves, there are these big, beautiful leaves that grow up with the cabbage. You can eat those too. They are so good. So, I, you know, I didn't know that until I first grew uh, my cabbage. I'm not a big cabbage girl, even though I like Brussels sprouts, which I think are just mini cabbages, but cabbage. And let me tell you some of the benefits of cabbage. Um, it fights inflammation, lowers blood pressure and lowers cholesterol. Cabbage itself has vitamin C, fiber, vitamin K, and decreases inflammation, all right? Lettuce, you can grow lettuce inside. This is number nine. Number nine, I'm, I'm not that good at this. <laughs> lettuce has vitamin A, it's good for hydration, improved vision, and improved sleep. Now, lettuce isn't one of my go-tos for leafy green vegetables because it's really mainly water. And I grew the lettuce. And for me, I just didn't get enough bang for my buck. Other people I know love to grow lettuce inside. So that's just, I'm just sharing, sharing with you my own personal experiences with growing different, um, different veggies, all right? Then we had Callaloo. The first year I started growing, I was in a community garden and there was this woman who had a couple of different Callaloo trees. Now I'm black American. I grew up in Connecticut. We didn't have Callaloo trees just everywhere. So she was like, here, do you want this? And I was like, sure. So she pulls it up out of the ground and she gives me this Callaloo plant. Right. And so I bring it home. I put it in my back seat. The little plant shriveled up. I brought it to my garden plot. I planted it. It was still shriveled and wilted. And on day two, it was still shriveled and wilted. And on day three, it was still shriveled and wilted. But on day four or like five, it was like this. It had sprouted up, but it had all these beautiful leaves. And 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 I and I and I cut them and she taught me how to she told me how to cut them. And then you have to cut it before it flowers. And it also blows, the seeds blow. And that's all they need. And then you just see callaloo plants popping up. So for, the, for I think about two or three years, I had callaloo and then it just died. And then that was the end of that. <laughs> so it was like a little mini experience with the callaloo. Um, so callaloo, the benefits for that is it contains flavonoids, vitamin C, vitamin K, manganese, calcium, iron, and potassium. Number seven, potatoes. Man, these potatoes, they were playing with my emotions. Other people could grow potatoes, but I didn't. I don't even bother to grow them anymore. I, it would be easier for me to grow them in the cabinet underneath, like everybody else. Potatoes be growing, uh, garlic, the little stems be growing. Uh, but with potatoes, you get a bucket, you put a hole in the bucket, and you and you cover, you put soil in it, you cover the potato, and then when you start to see little um like roots coming up, you just keep covering it. And then the potato's supposed to get bigger, et cetera. Didn't quite work that way for me. I'm not a big potato girl, so I'm fine with it. The nutritional value for potatoes are multitude of vitamins and minerals, antioxidant, it improves blood sugar control, and it's naturally gluten-free. Number six, 
Number six and number five, I'm going to do it together. Number six is garlic. It's antimicrobial, antifungal, and it supports bone health. Onions, antioxidant, helps blood sugar levels, improves digestion, anti-inflammatory, and vitamin C. You can plant onions in the spring, and in that same space, plant garlic in the fall, like the second week in October, or before the first frost. So that depends on where you live. In Connecticut, that's around October. And you can do that in the same spot. And just like what Robert was saying, you want to make sure that you have the nutrients because, you know, like he said, the nutrients is sucked up into the plant, right? So you can use the same space for like one or two seasons, then you have to replenish that nutrients in the soil, all right? And the good thing about onions and garlic, you plant it and you leave it for the season and you get it at the end of the at the end of that season. Same thing with uh with garlic. You plant it and leave it. Okay, it's a it's a really easy way to start growing so you can learn how to reconnect to the soil and growing your own food and learning how to weed and and just, you know, just understanding what goes in your soil and seeing the worms and seeing the sun and getting your vitamin D. And when it rains, it means something to you because, you know, your plants are getting watered. You'd be surprised how just connected you are planting something that you don't even really tend to. Like if you do onions and garlic. Uh, how it just makes you, it just reconnects you. Once you get reconnected, you really can't go back because you realize how good and nourishing it feels to your own soul, okay? All right, tomatoes, number four. Antioxidant, the, it contains lycopene, reduced risk of heart attack, uh, I'm sorry, heart disease, vitamin C, vitamin K, and fo folate and potassium. If you're planting tomatoes, make sure you have some kind of, uh, you need, need a, a, a tomato cage and you might need some kind of mesh around it to keep the little pests away, the little chipmunks and squirrels. One season, the chipmunks kept eating my mama's tomatoes. <laughs> she was mad at those chipmunks. <laughs> so you have to protect your tomato cages because tomatoes, when they're natural, are nice and sweet, all right? Number three, peppers. You can grow jalapeno peppers, hot black peppers. Um, there are other scotch bonnet peppers. Scotch bonnet peppers are really hot. You probably only need one. <laughs> and you can just get a little piece, and that's all you need. Or you can grow bell peppers, all right? You need, bell, you need um, pepper cages to grow them. And some of the nutrients are with red bell peppers. They're high in vitamin A and the highest in beta carotene over the other peppers. So red gives you more than orange, which gives you more than yellow and green, which basically don't give you that, okay? So get the red and the orange ones. Number two, spinach. For spinach, uh, okay, for, oh, oh, wait, here we go, let's go outside, there we go. For spinach, uh, it has uh, carotenoids, vitamin C, vitamin K, folic acid, iron, and calcium. Personally, I don't grow or cook spinach anymore because spinach will be all huge and big, right? I'm trying to get in the camera. And then when you either boil it down or put it in the food that you're cooking and just let it steam, it just wilts away. And I'm all about bang for my buck. But spinach is very easy to grow. It's very easy to grow. You can get, you can, and there's also uh, vine growing spinach, okay? very easy to grow, very good for you. But I personally, I eat collard greens and kale. Those are my jams. Because just like what what what, uh, what um, Robert was saying, there's, there's nutrients in the leaf, there's nutrients in the stem, you can make that broth. My great grandmother used to do the same thing. All the, all the good stuff is in a pot. So, you know, I heard that from her. So spinach has, oh, I said that already, but I'll say it again, carotenoids, Vitamin C, vitamin K, folic acid, iron, and calcium. And last but not least, kale, okay? Um, kale and collard greens. They have carotenoids, vitamin C, antioxidant, and protect cell damage, um, protect your cells from DNA damage, okay? When you grow, and they're easy to grow, when you grow them and you see these big, beautiful leaves just bursting up with the sun and all of that. Listen, let me say something. It's a feeling that you will love and you won't forget that feeling and you're going to want that feeling again, just really interacting with nature. Okay, so that's my top 10 of healthy vegetables to grow that are very easy to grow. 
all right? You can grow onions, garlic, peppers inside. You can grow lettuce inside. Um, you can grow anything inside, quite frankly. But if you're living in an apartment and you have a windowsill, you have a ledge, you have a balcony, you can grow off the sides of the balcony. And if you're growing onions and garlic and peppers, you're not going to attract animals because they don't like that stuff. Those are the ones that they don't like. All right. So those are my suggestions. I hope that you guys, you know, can just give it a try and let me know. Robert, are you back? I'm here. Oh, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm here. Okay, yeah. I'm back. No, I was just giving you your time. I would add uh, for black men, beets, easy to grow. I've grown them right behind me. Mm -hmm. Windowsill of a, of a balcony, you can grow beets. They're excellent for blood pressure. Not just men, I should say men and women. If you have blood pressure issues, beets are natural blood pressure reducers. I've cut, I'm on blood pressure medicine. I've cut it in half twice. So I'm the next time I go to the doctor, he's gonna be like, you don't need it. And I'm gonna blame that on I'm gonna I'm gonna give the praise to well God for one, but then I'm gonna say it's uh beyond me or impossible burger but I'm, I'm joking but the real attribute is because i switched from all these things that are bad for me or i'm switching from all these things that are bad for me and because you can't grow i can't teach people how to grow this stuff and grow vegetables in my garden and get healthy without passing it on and feel good about making money and charging people for it right that's right so I have to do what when you're young, you think about making money, making money, making money. At least I did. As you get older, you think about helping people, helping people, helping people, and the money will come. God, Allah will, will bless you. Whatever higher deity that you 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 attribute to will help you. The universe will help you when you start changing the way you think. And if you change the way you eat. It will help change the way you think. It starts with That's this. Right. That's right. Making that decision. Say, you know what? So after watching this, I'm going to do one thing. Do something. One thing. If not, you're silly, right? Do one thing to better yourself yep. today. If it means I'm not going to eat white rice anymore. I'm going to don't go extreme like side. Just go to cold turkey. <laughs> Everybody can't do that. But you can That's stop right. eating the chicken nuggets from McDonald's. Yep. You can pass up McDonald's and you go to the store and you can learn how to cook something plant based. And then you'll graduate when you start doing that and you're feeling better. You're going to start saying, well, I want to grow my own stuff. That's right. It starts right here to transform this right here. Yep. That's right. That is so right. Thank you. Robert. That's what I did. That's my testimony. And that's why I created a whole business. I was in politics. I was, you know, so I was, we were doing big things. I still am. It's just a different focus. My big thing is about self knowledge. There's three parts to who you are. There's the physical, which we can take care of. There's the mental, which we can think about. And then there's the spiritual. They're all connected. And That's this right. is the time that we got to start doing it. That's right. That's right. And honestly, guys, uh, I don't bring just anybody on Tuesday talk. I do my investigative work before I even send out an invitation. So you did. I was wondering when you were going to get to me because I saw, I see you, you're doing your thing, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm nobody. We've known each other a long time. This is like my little sister. I guess I'm nobody. But maybe now she thinks like we're 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 getting there because she wants me. But no, but and I'm joking. But <laughs> I really, I will say this: you are very critical of the what you put out, and I've been watching you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because I see what you're doing. You're not just out there like most people for the likes and stuff. You could care less about that. You care about the content you deliver, That's right. which is the only reason why you can call me and be like, I got you anytime because we're on the same page. We're talking yeah. about healing self and growing within. This is the part of who we are. We're supposed to be growing up, right? Yeah. Part of growing up is not just physical. It's, it's, it's mental and spiritual. But how we treat our physical being, which you only get about 80 ticks on this planet, give or take a few years, this is going to leave us. But we can, keep, we can keep it here as long and optimal as we want. It just depends on what you feed it. 
That's right. You know, and one of the things you said was, you know, referencing the, the soul and the spirit. I started gardening. It was so I, I lost my cousin in 2013, my aunt in 2014, and my dad in 2016. So from like the, the time frame of 2013 to about 2019, I have memory gaps and some memory loss because of the just the trauma that I experienced. I started gardening around 2014 or 2016. I don't remember who, who which one it was. I think it was 2016 after my father died. I don't know. Um, but but part of the reason that I started gardening was because I needed something that was peaceful and something that was natural and reconnected me to like a sense of of nature and 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 gardening gave me so much peace it really helped in my mourning process to continue to mourn and grieve and also to heal whatever trauma you're facing or you have faced or probably need to face or should face i am not saying this is this is the therapy you need i am saying this could be part of it it was it was a part of my therapy and it it just it it opens up a side of you that's been dormant and purposely damaged but not irreparably you can repair that you can learn it you can return back to this knowledge black people listen the first farmers on the planet were us the first hunter gatherers on the planet was us were us <laughs> you know what i'm saying the first biochemists were us the first no. people the happy and 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 then we can bring it on back to happy happy the river and happy the movement okay a whole civilization started around this river and 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 how were people eating they weren't going to grocery stores they were living on the land naturally they were able to to live and work around the inundation it wasn't called this great flood and disaster it was called the inundation because we knew how to work with it. We, black people, we knew how to work with nature and thrive and build monuments that still stand to this day. So people who are like, well, I can't grow it. Are you kidding me? You come from the original growers. So yes, you can. I'm gonna leave this one last example that I'm gonna give. Wait, 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 wait. I see okay. what you just try to do because See, what Sai does is she will drop all this knowledge and then she's going to end it on a high note. Nope. Because you started something and you said something that was so profound. Mm -hmm. Like you started a whole discussion because it's really understanding like who we are. That's right. That's right. As a people, right? So much stuff happens. If you turn on the news every day, so much stuff is happening. F forget the Tuskegee experiment go deeper to the psychology of if you were going to try something out to see if it was going to be successful or not successful, who are you going to try it out on? Who out of all the races, who is the one that you would say, if they can handle it, it's gold, right? Whether it be disease to test, to see, how we are, whether it be resiliency, whether it be, so when we talk about original, right? How many things that we do today have been taken from us as if, and we act as if, like it's new, we created it. Thank we you. It from we us created to it. It's a popular thing, whether it's the sewing machine, whether it's the light bulb. Do you, I found this outside. I'm sorry to be long winded. I know you got a time limit, but I'm gonna tell you this. I saw where just recently they created a filament for the light bulb, right? Originally to last a hundred years, but they purposely, it's actually harder to create a filament that only lasts like two, right? Because they want us to be slaves. They want us to do this. And I'm in the cannabis industry, so I see it from this angle. They want us to be the consumers of cannabis. They want us to go to the dispensary and buy it and smoke it. But they don't want us, and, and when I say us, I say all of us, right? Go to the bank, and they'll give you a loan for anything that puts you in the debt. They'll give you a car loan, a house loan, anything that puts you in the debt. 
go to that same bank and say, I want to make something. I have a business where I can make something, right? And you black and watch what they do to you. I know, for example, because of the cannabis industry, there's very few of us that look like this in this industry because they don't want us to be manufacturers. They don't want you to take your own health into consideration. That's right. They want you dependent on things, and that's fine. That's the angle of just business structure 101 without any kind of, just look around. If it's advertised, it's not good. What they don't want you to do is to take the knowledge to say, I'm no longer going to be dependent on what you guys are going to feed me. I'm going to take my life into my own hands. That's the first thing they don't want you to do. So they're going to try to make it difficult. You won't see advertising for that. You're going to be underground. It's going to be groups like this that just the game is dropping because the Internet changed the game. Now we can meet. Nobody knows. Before we had to, like, go to a meeting hall and then they could. Now it's different, right? You can get the knowledge, but it's still up to you. So you have freedom of choice. You can say, I choose to get this information and not do anything with it. Or I'm going to do something about it and I'm going to take my life into my own hands. Because make it clear before we get off this, this chat, your life is in your hands. You have the choice to either grow and eat and, and be healthy as you possibly can or continue down the road that you're doing. That's the choice. But you're getting knowledge. You're getting the game. You're getting the game firsthand. And like you said, si, and, I'm, and I'm done, it starts with you just making a choice and saying it starts with you. Like you said, I decided I'm going to do something different. All we're doing is giving you testimony to how right. all movements are better, to how this, the life is better. I'm thinking clearly. I'm making better decisions. Or you can do it the way we've been doing it. And then we, and then we go to them to say, I'm sick. How do I get healed? Well, what you think the answer is? Take this. But it's only... Don't worry, your deductible will take care of it or this, that, and the other. Or if not, it's only $59.99 a month or whatever. Now you're in somebody's pocket, and that's the game. You get out of the pocket by doing this. And it does take some skill set and some knowledge, but the game is being given to you. So this is the part. Starts with a thought, change this. Thanks, Sai, for having me. I, lo I love you. You're great. I love you, too. The show is great. Your everything you're doing is awesome, and I and I hope you continue to just keep giving up that that knowledge in your Tuesdays talks, and you get people in here because you're giving up the game. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot from OG like like Robert. I hey, semi OG, semi OG, because I eat healthy, so my age is relative. That's true. That's see, he's just said he he said he fine. He was like, hold up, but I'm fine. So what you talking about? <laughs> That's what that Bye. was. <laughs> so, so, um, so I said earlier today or earlier on Tuesday talk, <laughs> excuse me, that I had a goal for the year. And for this year, I'm going to make sure that I grow all the vegetables that I'm going to eat. So therefore, I will only eat the vegetables that I grow. Why am I starting with vegetables? Because it's easier to grow vegetables in the Northeast than it is to grow fruit. And I haven't really grown a lot of fruit. So that's one thing that I'm going to learn uh, next year. And why am I saying next year? Because I want to get my vegetables down. Because once you're growing them, how are you preserving them? You can freeze them. You can can them. You can, um, you can like suck the air out of them in a little bag and, and store them. I, that's not the, those aren't the right. Dehydrate them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can dehydrate them. So those are three different ways that you can store them. So I'm going to focus on vegetables that I grow and how I'm going to store them. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm also going to focus on. And everything you mentioned, everything you mentioned, you can grow in a setup like this. You can grow kale, Swiss chard, <laughs> spinach, beets, tomatoes, cucumbers, very healthy for you, cucumbers, uh, peppers. Uh, peppers, green peppers. You can't grow an avocado tree. Come on. You can't grow oranges because right. they're trees, but this is right. all right. but there's so many nutrients you can grow this ground level to your to your shoulder, you can grow in here. Right, right, exactly. And and Robert is six five, so his shoulder is yeah over, 
it's over five foot four because I'm five foot four and a, a six foot five man's shoulders is above my head. I already know that. Yeah. So you you got a whole lot of space to grow up. I can stand up in this. Right. But again, it's only four feet deep and eight feet wide. So it's like standing up on your bed like you were a little kid. That's right. pretty much the space. You got that in your, your apartment. You can, And if you don't, kick out the roommate and put this in there. Your life depends on it. And this then is, is easy. And make, make some money from it to replace that roommate. Right if you want to grow what we're growing, you definitely would kick your roommate out. I mean, your roommate's not going to give you five grand a month. That that's what we can do. But that's you know, if you're interested, go to our our website, let'sgrowside.com. We'll show you the way. And also make sure you have a license because I ain't trying to get nobody locked. You can up. go to our website, and and we have the on the front page is a map of the United States where I keep current because I'm I I live this life, so I'm about that life. I'm always on the I'm preparing for a TED Talks. I'm doing so. These things, like the legality, I will tell you this before we close. What this industry, the cannabis industry, is is the closest thing to the gold rush in the turn of the century. This is an industry that's being created as we speak. Laws are being written right now. Their legislation is being drafted, everything, and it's not designed for us, for black and brown people to benefit from. They want us to be the consumers. Facts. The consumers, not the manufacturers. The money's in creating it. The money's in the knowledge. The money's in everything. But it's not from being the consumer. It's no different than the plantation. And we going back to we talk about our history. Mm -hmm. You know, slavery. That's what this was. I mean, it was slavery. That's what we're in. That's why we go to the nine to fives. I'm sorry. You have to get me on for the history talk so we can talk about really like our history because we. I do that too. I mean. But no. freedom, freedom looks like creating something like this that can pay my house note and my car note. And knowing the knowledge of this is a goose right here, and I'm just teaching you how to lay golden eggs. So for those that have ears, let them hear and check out our, our website, let's go inside.com. We'll show you the way. That's yeah. my self plug side. So thank you for having me. All right. I want you to know that. Um, Robert does know what he's talking about in a lot of ways, like I said before, in the business aspect, the growing aspect, and um, and also in, in making food. And that's and that that's the whole total combination of of what this is, from seed to poop, basically, from the seed to the plant to eating it for pooping out. That's the cycle. And then the poop is like fertilizer, and the cycle begins all over. So at, at this point, you guys, what is your goal for this year? What's your goal? How are you going to reclaim our knowledge? Because we did this first. We ain't new to this, all right? And we are we are remembering, we are putting ourselves back together. And part of that is the knowledge. So set a goal, make that goal, and get started. And you can reach out to me at Yoga Girl Sai, and I can help you. I can help answer any questions. I can redirect you to Robert or anyone else that I meet that's an expert in the field. Or if I, if I know the information, I'll share it with you as well. I'm going to update the flyer that I put out on uh, the advertisement, which was on the Shrine of Ma'at Facebook page, Shrine of Ma'at YouTube, Yoga Girl Sai YouTube. Please subscribe to Yoga Girl Sai and uh, give me like two days to do it, 48 hours. And um, and I will update all, give me at least 48 hours, or at most 48 hours rather, at most. Um, and, 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 I'll, and I'll get that done for you. This is a very, very powerful lesson take your food and your health in your own hands. And I will say one of the things that's really good that we need is circulation. Beets are good for circulation, circulating that blood, circulating that oxygen. That is what we need for our vitality, for vitality in our lives. I'm going to tell you like this, a booster shot gets, people think I'm 15 years younger than I am. And that's on my bad days. I'd be like, hell yeah, I make me feel good. Why? It's because of what I eat. Okay. As, you know, with black folks, we got melanin. So, so every, we all got, we all have that, right? How are you taking care of that? Okay. So set your goals, reach out, ask questions, and I will see you next Tuesday. And I want to thank you so much for supporting Tuesday Talk and for showing up every Tuesday. And and I really, truly don't take it for granted. And I appreciate it. Please, let's hit up Ms. Zell. Can we drop the Zell one more time? I'm going to leave it highlighted. We have Let's Grow Inside. I'm going to put that up. 
And let's drop that Zoe. Let me see. It was up here earlier. You know what I'm, I'm so going to do? I'm so glad we can share this knowledge. That's so deep. That That's so like important. Just sharing the knowledge is so it is. important. It's like, That's it's so, like it's a family I'm, combo. Yeah. yeah. So you, I'm going to gonna let everyone go. I appreciate your participation. I'm going to put his Zelle and information in um, the updated flyer. Okay? So I really, truly, oh, here it is. Boom. Thank you, Jason, to the rescue. There it is. I'm going to leave it there. Let's hit the brother up. We appreciate this knowledge, peace, and blessings to you all. Hotep and myrrh, peace and love. And I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs>